In this video, we're going to be checking out the new Visual Composer Website Builder plugin for WordPress. I'm going to take you through the basics of what it does, how you use it, and I'm going to give you my impression on what I think of this plugin and Visual Page Builder for WordPress. So, let's just jump into WordPress and take a look. I'm Paul C and this is WP Tuts, where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites without all the technical jargon. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon to be notified of our weekly new content as soon as it's added to the channel. So we've got Visual Composer's website builder open and we're going to take a look at what this does. So if you've ever bought a theme from places like Theme Forest and you've had a visual page builder, it's more than likely going to have been Visual Composer. So if you're used to that, you're going to find some similarities with this, but also quite a lot of differences. Now, this is not a comprehensive review or a comprehensive walkthrough or demo. This is just showing you how it works and giving you my impression after using Visual Composer for years and also using page builders like Elementor and Elementor Pro. So let's take a look first of all at the interface and then we'll take a look at how we actually start working with it to create things. So I've got a basic page open in front of me, something I've created previously. So what I want to do first of all is just take you through the interface itself. You can see it's much more streamlined than it used to be and it's all kind of a front end editor now. It's no longer just restricted to the back end, it's front end. In other words, you design what you see on the page. So if you're used to things like the Divi Front End Builder or Elementor, you're going to find this is going to be fairly similar to what you do there. So we take a look down the left hand side, you can see you've got a series of different icons broken up into the top section and also the bottom section. We've also got different things like context based options and you can see as we mouse over we get different context options popping up depending upon the kind of thing we want to do. So let's keep the interface start off simple. If we take a look down the left hand side, you see we've got the option to add an element and an element is basically a widget, things like text blocks, things like images and things along those lines. So if we click to add on there, you can see it opens up this left hand column with all the different icons of the different types of things we can put in. And this is where I kind of find one of my first things that really kind of annoys me with this new page builder. It looks like a really bad Android phone desktop. The icons are different. It all just looks a bit of a mishmash. I would much rather see everything being kept in line and looking the same in much the same way as you had the widgets with Visual Composer or the way we have things laid out with Elementor or Divi, for example. So first of all, it just looks a little disjointed in my opinion. However, we can come in and filter these down based upon the types of content or different kind of element that we want to work with. So we might say, say we want to deal with things to do with media, and you can see that now pulls up things like simple sliders, images, galleries, and so on. If we mouse over any of these, you can see we get a pop-up showing us what's going on kind of thing on there. Again, this is one of those things that I think is a little clunky. It reminds me very much of the Photoshop interface. One of those things that most people just quickly go in and turn off because it's just annoying. I can kind of tell what an image gallery is going to be. I don't need this to pop up for me every single time. Okay, so that's how we insert some of those basic things. Let's close that down. Next up, we've got the option to add a template in. So we can create templates from an entire page, or we can create templates from simple building block elements, such as rows or such as sliders we create, and we can then add those into the page. Again, if we click on there, you can see we get the sort of what becomes a familiar kind of left-hand section that allows us to go through and pick any of these different sort of layouts. And you can see, again, we get this sort of mouse over that tells us what they do. In this context, it makes a little more sense because it gives us a preview of what that particular section is going to look like. Like. We can also save our own templates and create template names and so on and so forth. Close that down. Next up, we've got tree view, which allows us to sort of see a hierarchical view of what our page is made up like. So if you've used sort of CSS builders or you've, you've dealt with sort of creating pages in a, in a sort of fashion like this, this is really going to be fairly familiar with you. And you can see we also get a series of different options for editing this particular block. So if I wanted to, this top row, I could come in, I could click edit. And now that gives me all the options to edit that particular block, that particular row. You can see everything in there. And it's a kind of combination of something like Elemental and Visual Composer where you've got a nice layout. Now this is one of those things that I do think this is a very professional looking layout. One of those things that I think Elemental could sort of take a couple of leaves out of this book. It just looks a little bit more pro. So that's something I definitely do like about it. Again we can close that down. 
Next up, we've got undo and redo, which is quite useful. If you do make a mistake and you want to sort of jump back a couple of steps, you can do that. That's pretty cool. We move on down to the bottom section now. You can see we've got a range of different responsive views that allows us to see what our layout's going to look like and adjust it based upon the type of device that the end user is going to be viewing. And you can see we've got desktop. We've got desktop for sort of uh, different kind of dimensions. We've got tablets for landscape. We've got tablet portrait, phone landscape, phone portrait. Again, something that Elementor could definitely sort of take a leaf out of this book. We don't all look at things in portrait mode. Some of us look at things in landscape mode. It would be nice to have that option in there. Okay, next up, you've then got the settings, which you can click and open up, and you can see we've got different things in here where we can come through. We can choose the different types of layers we want to work with. If we want to do local CSS adjustments, which will apply just to the page or a different element on the page, and we associate with a class or an ID, we could do that. Or we could do global CSS, which will apply to all the different pages set up and using uh, sort of this visual page builder. Pretty cool. Interface is very simple. You can see we can expand and contract things. We can even drop in global or local JavaScript for the page or the site. So really quite nice. What I would like to see is all of these sort of closed up to start off with. Maybe just the first one open as opposed to everything being open because it can be just a little bit unwieldy when you start to have all these panels going on, especially if you're dealing with a smaller screen sort of setup. I'm on a 24 inch widescreen at the moment and it's okay. But imagine if you're working on something like a 20-inch screen with a lower resolution, it would just all start to be just a little bit cramped. So that would be quite a nice little tweak to see adjusted to have all these closed up from the get-go. Next up, we've got the option for the hub. And this is kind of where you've got a repository online where you can pull all these different things in from there. You can see you've got elements and templates and headers, footers and sidebars and so on. Tons of different things in here which we can go through and we can sort of filter out. And we can see all the different sort of template basic items that we want. Filter at the top, search through on there. So pretty cool. Close that down, come back over now. And we've got the update which will update anything we've done onto the page and save it so we can see it live on the actual site itself. And finally at the bottom we've got the menu which allows us to preview our changes, to view the page or to jump back into WordPress. So that's the basics of the left-hand section. We've then got the different context-based based menus. And this is very similar to what we used to see with Visual Composer, the original Visual Composer, not the website build that we're viewing now. And as you can see, we've got some similar options. We've got the plus that allows us to click and add a new element in. We've also then got options that will deal with things like the rows, columns, and so on. And as you can see, a lot of different options. And again, this is one of those things that I kind of feel just becomes a little bit option overkill. There are so many different things going on here that it kind of makes it a little bit sort of, what do I click on? Where, where's that? What's that option kind of thing? So it would be nice to sort of go and have a little bit more of a streamlined option. Whereas when you want to click on a row, you select the row and then the options open up for the row as opposed to everything being in this little pop out where it kind of just feels there's just too much going on there. Okay, so that's the interface. Let's take a look at actually creating something on here. You can see I created a really simple layout. We've got a header section at the top, a couple of columns and text and so on. So let's go and create something else. You can see if we scroll down to the bottom of the page, we've got the option to go through and choose what type of layout we want to pull in. We're not restricted to this. Obviously, we can come in and we can adjust this and make some changes to it. But you can see we can do things like add a text block directly in. We can add custom rows in, five, four, three, two, one kind of columns and so on. So let's keep this really simple and put a one column layout in. Once we do that, we now get this little column block in there and we've got some options which we can sort of tap into now to control things. So even though we put one column in there, we could easily split this if we wanted to and create more we've also got things like the design options that allow us to sort of come in and control various different aspects of this the margins the padding and so on we can come in and we can set device type all or we can create custom device types we can put background images in there simplify the controls which is something that was obviously in visual compose before which is quite useful if you don't want to have to put in a margin on all four sides and it's going to be the same value you can put simple controls on just drop one value in there and it'll apply to all the different sides of it so pretty cool you can see we can add images in we can put a background color in there so if we wanted to we click we can got a nice sort of color picker on here we can choose from any of our sort of colors we can come in and choose from a pile of different predefined colors drop in a hex value rgb value and so on so let's just say we wanted to put a color in there you can see as soon as i click it we now get the color showing directly in the preview area of our screen 
So any changes we make now are reflected in real time, which is pretty cool. So that's how easy it is to change things like background colors and so on. If we want to drop an image in there, we can select the image, add our image, and you can see now that the place is in the background. If I want to get rid of that, I can click to remove the image, or I can move the image and so on. I've also then got a pile of controls that are specific to what we've just added in there. So we can see we can cover, contain, full width, tons of different options in there, and the background position so we can get it exactly where we want. We might say we want this to be top right hand side, bottom left, whatever you want. You can see as we do it again, it updates in real time. So pretty cool. We can put overlays on there, background colors, parallax effects if we want to. We can animate it. Whole ton of good things. Dividers, you know, you've got a ton of options going on in here to create what you want. Let's remove that image so we can leave it with the background color. So that's pretty cool, so we want. So now I can go in and I can do other things. So what do I want to put in there? Well, I can click to add an element and I say, well, let's drop a text block in there. So I can click push my text block in there and now you can see we've got two ways of working we can come directly into the actual area itself click and what happens is it grays out the background to give us a nice focused view on what we're editing which is really really nice way of sort of seeing things without the distraction of the background I think in being in place alternatively you can come in and you can do it in a sort of elemental style where you can just type it into the left hand side and you just work it inside the normal editor that's part of WordPress so you can see you've got, you can open this up and expand all the extra things, toggle your toolbars and so on, switch between text and visual, add your media directly and they want to. You can come in, you do your element ID, add in classes and so on. So it's very similar in what you can do with what you did in Visual Composer. It's just laid out in a slightly different way with some other options going on as well, you know, different interface and so on. Once we're happy with that, we, we're good to go. We can come back in if we want to, and we can adjust this so we can say, well, let's add a column in there. So let's split that in two, and you can see now that immediately takes on the second column. So what we could do now, if we wanted to, is just close this out, come back in, and we could add a new item from element from here, or we can come down and click the plus, and let's just say we'll put a single image in there. Once we've done that, you can see it pulls in an image for us, a default sort of container image. We could easily change that if we want. We can remove it or we can edit or replace the image so we can put our own image in there if we want to. All very quick, very easy. If we want to do things like adjust various different padding and so on for a different item, we can simply come to this block on the left-hand side, click to edit that. You can see that now opens up this particular editing block. And what we can do is we can just close this down Switch to simple controls and let's just say, let's put 30 pixels of padding in there and you can see that now adjusts it accordingly. So all very easy to do. There's nothing complex about this. It's a fairly straightforward interface with like I say, the exception of this being just a little bit unwieldy. Okay, we've got things like if we want to edit the column, we can click on that and now we're sort of switching over to the column where we can edit any controls in there. So if we wanted to, we can sort of come in and put padding and margin and stuff like that in that if we want to. Or we can change background colors. We can do a ton of different things in there. All very straightforward. So let's just take a little deeper look at what we have with this context options. You can see it breaks down into four distinct different sections and it kind of works on the hierarchy of the items that you're working with. So the first option are the rows. Then there was the container that we've got everything placed inside of. Next up, we've got then the columns. Then we can edit the actual column and finally we can delete things. So if we want to make some changes to the overall layout of this, we can easily do that in one of two ways. If we want to do something like adjust the width of this, where well, we can just come in between the two different columns and you can see we now get this little arrow, which we can now adjust accordingly. So you can see very easy to do it that way. However, if you want to do it in a different way, you can click and we can come in and we can edit this. And you can see now we have some different options. We've got column gaps, which if we wanted to, we can get rid of that. So we have no column gap there. We could do things like then content position. So we can position this top, middle, or bottom. So you can see if we've got a small amount of content, you can easily position that however you want. So we can say we want to put in the middle and so on. We can do equal column height, which makes sure that everything is the right height. We've also then got different row layouts. And you can see at the moment the percentage values where we've dragged this over to get exactly what we want visually. We can also do that by typing those values directly into there, or we can choose from any of these predefined layouts. Again, this is something that's very similar to what you see inside Elementor, which is pretty cool because that works really, really well. So you can see very quickly, we can create something that looks pretty cool very easily, and we can come in and adjust it into wherever we want. Then we've also got the option for things like actually adjusting the column. 
So you can see if we come into this, we've got design options, and this is just for the column now. So we can come in and adjust that. We can come in and we can do things like edit. We can clone it, whatever we want. We've also then got, in this example, we're dealing with a text block. You can see now that the icons appear for the text block that's inside this particular column and row. Whereas if we come to this one, you can see we now get context information based upon the item, which in this example is the image. So it's a very intuitive way. It's just like I said at the beginning of this video, it seems a little overwhelming to start off with. And as you move your mouse around, things start to pop up all over the place. And if you're not accustomed to working with these kinds of things, it can get a little bit daunting to start off with thinking there are so many different options to work with. So let's say now that I'm happy, I've made the changes to my page, I've created my page and so on, I wanna see what it looks like. Well, we can just close this down. If we come down to the bottom, you can see we've got the menu, click on there, and we can say view page. Click on that, it'll open up a new tab, and we can now take a look at our page. Now you'll notice that nothing is actually showing on here at the moment, the changes we've made. Why? Well, let me just show you, let me just jump back in. We need to check the update, otherwise all we're doing is we're viewing this inside the page editor itself, which is beneficial if you think about it, because the last thing you want to do is to be making changes to your site, and the people that are actually on that page are seeing you making changes in real time. So this just means that until we click on that, even viewing the preview of it is not gonna show us the changes we've just made. So let's click update. That'll go through, save it, gives us a little green check to say, okay, I've done that. Now we can come back in, click on the menu option, say view our page, take a look, and now we scroll down, there's our new section added into the page for us. Now before I wrap the video up, I want to jump back into WordPress itself, and I want to show you what it's like now, the changes that you have if you use the Visual Composer, the original version, how you're gonna see it different in the back end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click out of this, click the bottom option, say back to WordPress, that'll take you back to my page, and you can see we now end up with a page that's different to what we used to have. We no longer have the classic editor with the option above it for the visual editor, or sorry, for visual composer and the front end visual composer. We now have the option to use either visual composer, which clicking on that will take us into the view that I've just come out of, or we can open the classic editor, which will then give us a warning saying, if you do that, all the options you've done from the, the uh, visual composer will not be transferred over. So we'll cancel out of that. But you can see it's now a much simpler streamlined interface. We don't have that back end way of working where we see all the blocks and so on. We now only have that visual front end way of working, which in a way is a lot better. So that's what I'm gonna wrap up this video. I just wanted to give you my first impression and overview of the Visual Composer update, the website builder. Now don't get this confused with the WP Bakery page builder, which is what the old Visual Composer has now been renamed, just to add a level of confusion there to you. That's a different product and works in a very different way. It works in the same way as you would have been used to with a the theme you may have purchased previously that had Visual Composer bundled with it. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you are using the new Visual Composer website builder, give me your opinions, give me your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to see how you find this new product, whether you like it, dislike it, what you think of the interface and the way that everything is kind of now just a little disjointed. Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified every time we add new content. All the applicable links are in the description below, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can click any of those affiliate links. It doesn't cost you any more, but it gives a small percentage back to the channel and help us create more great content for you. As always, take care.